and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, what's behind the numbers. So the uh, the loss for the month in November was forty three thousand dollars. The uh, the loss for year to date is two hundred and eighty three thousand dollars. Now that the the yacht club property expenses in November totaled fifty six thousand dollars. That's thirteen thousand dollars more than the total loss. And that's comprised of interest on the B1 bank loan, uh, landscaping costs for our near nine acres, the Kemper management fee, and funding the operations for uh, losses. But uh, without these costs, the rest of the community would have been in the black for November. Similarly, the Yacht Club property experiences from November year to date totaled $436,000, which is $100,000 plus more than the, the 283. And it's made up of similar costs. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Clearly, 2020 has been an unusual year, uh, several one-off costs. We didn't have any revenue for nine and a half months at the club. Wage costs prior to the startup, management fees all year, the food and beverage inventory needed to be restored, uh, training of staff, COVID complications in terms of both capacity and the four days that we lost of revenue in November. My assessment of, of the numbers, I think Ryan and his people are doing as good a job as anyone could do with the circumstances that are on their plate. And having said that, we can't afford to run anywhere near this level of loss on an ongoing basis. The loss for 2020 would be the equivalent of approximately two 10% assessment increases. Net, we're depleting our liquidity and can't afford two years in a row like this. As it is, expenditures for major improvements and repairs in 2021 will be constrained. So. We're up against it financially in the long, in the short term, and uh, we're taking steps to uh, make ends meet. That concludes my report. Okay. Very good. Let's go over to Chip for security. Uh, much of the same uh, high volume of uh, vehicles coming um, through the visitor lane. We continue to have many residents that either don't have a um, combination of toll tags or stickers. So they use a resident lane, which uh, slows it down. If uh, not going to get a toll tag, at least get a resident sticker that will speed the process up. Uh, we are, um, the security team is pretty close to fully staffed. Um, we're using the new vehicles, uh, which have uh, some uh, great technology available in them uh, just to make, uh, make our uh, tours through the property uh, more virtual for us uh, in having uh, the, the vehicles all have uh, dash cams in them. So we're able to um, record some things that we typically don't have, a bit, hadn't had available to us in the past. We disposed of the two previous, the, uh, Toyota pickup trucks were purchased um, and we're happy to move those down the road. And um, so we have, uh, I think uh, Kristen and her team have uh, been doing a good job. We've got work through the uh, holiday for um, Thanksgiving and uh, everything's moving along just fine. That completes my report. Okay. And we have, um... Ryan on here, but I'm not certain that he is on this meeting because of the event that is currently going on down yeah, at the Yacht Club. I went up to check on Santa and Ryan mentioned that they are, um, they're very busy and he, he will have to probably be late. So okay. yeah, okay. Should, you know, just skip him and he will log on as soon as he can. Okay. Um, all right. That we can circle back to that. Um, as far as reports, that really brings us to the end of that section. 
no action items that we're seeing here. So it takes us into owner or visitor form. Um, I know Roy Kuypers had um, uh, something that he had sent over last night, Lee. Uh, yep. Can you read go? It. Yep. Yeah. He says, question for the board. Um, why do the security vehicles ride around with the flashlights all day and night? Um, it wakes them hourly because he lives in Yon Yacht Club. And why does the community need this? Um, just to kind of get an answer for. Right. for the I can I can answer that question. It's a uh, requirement by Allied Universal. So we've readjusted the uh, light bars and um, should be uh, just using the rear uh, lights, uh, but it's a, it's a corporate requirement on their part. So it's a safety I have, issue. I have a question on it and I'm all for safety. It, they are quite bright and I appreciate that. And those are gonna be excellent for um, emergency situations, et cetera. Um, definitely gets noticed. Is there any ability, and just a question, is there any ability to change because uh, on some of the LED sides of things that we can change the brightness of it or go to where it's just the orange or yellow lights flashing. Do we know if it has that capability? I'll, uh, I'll check with the upfitter and see. I don't know the answer okay. to it. I know it can't change the colors, but, right. um, but it may be able to change the intensity. But when they first started, they were using the front and the back. Yes. And then I went up and made a adjustment. Um, and so that they're just using the rear portion of it. So right. okay. I'll check into it and get back to you. Okay, sounds good. Let's put a pause on owner visitor forum. Just saw that Ryan was able to jump on. And so it's gonna allow uh, him to do his report on the Yacht Club. Uh, Ryan, there you go. Sorry, I'm just getting uh, situated here with our breakfast with Santa, so bear with me. Yeah, no, we appreciate you. Do you want to share my screen or do you want me to just go over? I can just go over it. That's easier. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay. It's getting up here. Okay. I am, uh, I am ready if, if you are. I'm looking for the ability for me to do that. Okay. 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 Yep. Yes, sir. Ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. I apologize for the tardiness. We are uh, running our breakfast with Santa and making sure that all the kiddos are getting a chance to get their Christmas wishes to them. So thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm going to go over some, some high-level notes here from the club from November 2020. Um, I'll touch on a couple key categories, and then I will move on to just some upcoming things that we're working on at the club. So starting with total revenue uh, for the club, we fell short. Uh, just over 33000 for the month. And just to make everyone aware that we were, if you weren't aware, we were closed for COVID concerns for roughly four days uh, in, in the middle to the end of the week, which probably cost us about 75% of that overall shortfall for the month. Um, that in combination with not getting the SS Lounge open until yesterday, uh, which also had a, a fair amount budgeted. Uh, about another $15,000. So the, those two factors combined uh, would have put us much closer to our revenue target in November. The positive news that comes from a, a shortfall is the ability for us to save a significant amount of money on our food and beverage costs along with our labor costs. Um, so our food and beverage costs, we actually uh, saved just over $6,000 due to an improved controls. Obviously being closed for a few days meant we did not need as much product. We did have a little bit of waste that we tracked separately um, due to the closure, but it was very minimal. Uh, and, then on, and then on the labor front, we were able to save $13,000. Uh, again, that's due to the closure, but also changing our staffing strategy and really working on driving as much to the bottom line as possible. One thing on the food costs that was really good for us is our food costs were under 30% for the first time in quite some time in the club's history. 
So our food costs were 27 and a half percent and our beverage costs were 23 percent. Uh, just to put that into perspective, um, you know, all of 2019 prior to the fire, those those costs were running closer to the, the low 40s. So we've already made some significant improvements. And as we drive more revenue, we're just going to continue to drive more more money to the bottom line. So um, that was a win for us. Expenses really kind of evened out over October and November. We were actually under in October and about 2,500 over in November. And that was simply just timing of invoices. We did need to purchase some small wares just to be able to function the restaurant, the venue, um, glasses, silverware, plates, just the, the basic stuff to be able to properly take care of the guests. Uh, going forward and beyond, we're in a much better spot and we'll be able to manage that expense number even tighter. Uh, so overall, our EBITDA number came in, uh, you know, we lost $25,000, which was a $16,000 miss to our plan. Uh, but again, being short 33000 in revenue and making up 50% of that to the bottom line, um, you know, it, it doesn't look pretty, but we, we really minimized the shortfall the best we could operationally uh, and, and feel confident now that we're through that really rough patch in the middle of November that through December will be in a much better spot. The lounge is open. Um, even with our 50% COVID restrictions, we have some flexibility to uh, creatively seat people, still socially distance and be under the correct guidelines, uh, but also drive some revenue. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, just quickly on venue operations and I'll hand it back over. Uh, so staffing levels are in a much better spot. Uh, our lounge did open yesterday. We had some really nice success. Uh, we still will be working and very diligent on COVID-19 guidelines and restrictions to make sure that while we want to be able to drive revenue, nothing's more important to us as, as a company and, and a leadership team to keeping everybody safe. So we will continue to be very vigilant with that. Uh, lots of upcoming events. We were very successful at Breakfast with Santa today. Uh, we will actually be doing take and bake meals for Christmas. So look for that to come out shortly on social media. Uh, brunch is now up and running with, with a lot of success. Uh, and now our fitness room is cleared and you'll start seeing some really cool fitness activations uh, towards the very end of the year and then the beginning part of 2021. Uh, and lastly, New Year's Eve, uh, we will have a reservation only type dinner. Uh, unfortunately, just with the current guidelines and restrictions, we don't see it as being responsible operators to have a big party. So we will have something more controlled on reservation. Uh, that'll be really classy, a nice champagne dinner, um, but in a socially distanced capacity where we're following the, the state mandates and guidelines. Yep. So that is, uh, that is all I have on the, the high level of the report. Very good. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Okay. All right. So that will move us back into owner visitor form. And we've heard on security lights. Um, Lee, any other text messages? Not yet. If anyone needs to text, um, the number is 469-767-4080. Can you say that one, one more time? 469 uh, 469- 767-4080. Okay. We'll give it some time here. There is a raise hand uh, uh, ability through this. We've had <clears throat> mild success with that in the past. So we're, we're, we're willing to hang on here and make sure that everybody has the ability to ask a question if they have one. If you click on participants, the list will come up. There's a spot where you can raise hand just for how to find it. So Nobody yet. Nobody? Okay. Yeah, you know, while we're while we're waiting here. Oh Chip. 
Uh-oh. He's muted. I just did it to demo. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. Then I'm going to lower your hand. <laughs> OK. Um, I did get a text message from somebody, uh, but I need to know who it is. And um, yeah, let's remember that when when you're texting uh, Lee, that you need to state your name and address. And then maybe I could unmute you. We can unmute you because then I don't quite understand what the question is. There we have a hand raised on fire tablet. So we'll wait on the text that came in and we'll uh, move over to this. One. I don't know who this is because it just says fire tablet. All right. Uh, Linda Honeycat. Oh, hey, Linda. Hey, good morning. Um, I just kind of tuned in just a little bit ago. I didn't hear, Have has it been announced what our dues will be in January? Yes, that was uh, last month. And what, what, what is that number? The exact number, hold on one second. I believe it's 168. Feel free, anyone on the board, to correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. All right. Lee, did you get a clarification? I've got the dot, dot, dots are coming, so. Okay, okay. My mom texts me, but not about this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and read that. No, just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Pat. Um, it's Pat I'm Pam uh, Monday from 50, uh, okay. 542 Canada Court. Um, she has a question about the dips in the road. Kim, do you want us to unmute you? Then um, she said, when will the, um, the bumps in the road be fixed? But I'm not sure exactly which ones or... Um, I, I can I can answer that. So we we've been meeting with a concrete contractor, uh, probably specifically she's asking about at Australia and Yacht Club. Um, we had the city out <clears throat> this week because uh, we had some indication there may have been a issue underground. There's a uh, sewer and water line that go across the road there, and um, the city came out and ran a camera. Uh, through the sewer pipe and to make sure there's no break in the pipe, which there is not. Uh, so we have, um, we have those stated, to, uh, it's on the list um, to get repaired here and uh, we'll be working on that in the next uh, 30 to 45 days. That's over by Mansell Park, right? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the, the only right. place that there's a big dip in the, okay, gotcha. yeah. Right. And then we're also working, uh, there are a number of spots that Chuck and his team will be working over the next uh, week or so uh, as weather permits um, to uh, seal up some um, potholes, if you will, with a epoxy product that we use that we've had some good success with. And uh, we've identified um, two or three other places, uh, you know, on um for for repair and we're just working through that process thank you chip got a thumbs up from pam saying thank you all right appreciate that pam lee anybody else no no other text messages okay we'll give it a little bit more time one more time my number is 469-767 Four zero eight zero. Thank you. I have to say, Santa upstairs was really cute, you guys. So I, have, I, I did take some pictures when I ran up there. I'll, I'll, we'll, I'm sure, share them. So that's awesome. I'm glad that's event. That event's going well. Lots of happy faces. So. Yep. Um, while we're waiting here, uh, I'd, I'd like to quickly speak on um, CDC Yacht Club side of things. I, this is a very interesting uh, time in a business where it's P 
people want to come in in droves and yet it's because of the CDC aspect too much, too close, et cetera. And um, that creates a lot of challenges. The thing that we can um, request from all of our residents and any guests that attend uh, that is that we please follow the, the guidelines. Uh, we opened up the SS lounge last night um, to, to good success, um, but then close to 10 o'clock had to shut it down because uh, repeat, um, offenses on not social distancing, et cetera. Uh, get it, everybody. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to pretend like this isn't it happening and, and want to just mentally move past it. We all do. Uh, but until then, the uh, and I know there's a lot of restaurants in Rockwell that are not uh, enforcing the rules, um, but we have looked at this and from a risk standpoint um, uh, and being mindful of the health of of the guest uh first and foremost as ryan had said it's of the utmost importance that we follow those guidelines and um, um don't want to have to to close things down actually we have the opportunity to really do a lot of business in multiple spaces uh when there are not events that have rented it out uh, so we have the ability to really do um, a lot of covers, as, as they say in the industry. Um, just really need people to, to follow the rules. And if security has to get called up there, um, they need to <laughs> be paid attention to. So um, I know that's not a fun thing to talk about, but it's going to be very important to the continued success uh, and that we have the right expectations. Um, this will not be forever, but until we're out of the woods here and we being the entire country, uh, then this is how it's gonna be. So uh, I see that Val has his hand raised. So uh, go ahead, Val. Yeah, Evan, I just wanted to kind of reiterate and thank you for making that comment. Um, but just, Val, would you just tell us who yeah. you are? Because some yeah, of exactly. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Right. Um, Val D'Souza, Vice President of Operations with Kemper Sports. I am Ryan's direct support with Kemper Sports Management. Um, Ryan and I work closely on COVID protocols and uh, procedures and policies to make sure that we keep everybody safe. And, and just to reiterate what you were saying, Evan, it's, it's our primary goal to keep our employees and our customers safe but also more importantly, keep our business safe and managing a property of, or a portfolio of 11 properties across the US from Vegas to Mississippi and to Texas. Um, I'm seeing all it takes is one or two exposures to close down an entire operation because of how the contact tracing has to work and has to follow. I know it's not fun to hear that and it, it doesn't benefit us where it certainly hurts our staff and it, it, it compromises our ability to keep our best people if we can't work within the hours we want to. So it's it's really tough on the staff. So I appreciate you making those comments because our job is to keep people working and keep customers happy and eating and drinking and enjoying their community asset. But we want to keep doing that in the best way possible with COVID-19 and uh, keep people safe. Uh, so I appreciate the comments and I appreciate everybody, you know, just kind of trying to spread the word that we're doing the best we can to make it through a, a pandemic, which there is no playbook for. Uh, we're, we're having to follow situations that are very, very fluid and changing on a daily basis. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, uh, Mr. President, I'd just like to add on here is that, um, you know, everybody has their opinions on uh, the COVID and all that, we just respectfully uh, asked, um, while you may not agree with um, Kemper's policies and procedures, we just would ask that you kindly respect them. Um, we want you to use the club, but, but um, also keep in mind um, your neighbors uh, and other guests that are coming in and using uh, the property. So we, we'd appreciate everybody's support on it. Uh, and again, how you feel about it personally uh, is your opinion, but be respectful of uh, what we're trying to do here as, as a community and uh, uh, be able to continue to use this great asset. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we all benefit. 
um, if we if we follow the rules, we'll get through this a lot better than than if we're kind of going back and forth and uh, not following the rules and having to shut things down, etc. So um, this actually is is a winning strategy to to drive more business uh, into other uh, activated areas in the club. Um, and um, we can all <laughs> benefit from it if we, if we uh, are all following the rules. So, and hopefully it won't be forever, or I know it won't be forever, but hopefully it'll be over soon. Well, it's not like our community has not experienced some true loss. Yes, that's true. And uh, I know that sometimes it's, uh, it doesn't affect, for the most part, it doesn't affect people uh, a whole lot, but there we had a couple of cases where it was the ultimate effect. Yeah. We need to just keep that. It's a very sobering fact. We need to keep that in mind. Yes, absolutely. All right, Lee. Anyone else? No. I don't see any. I don't see any other hands raised. So I feel like we've tried to give as much space here for that. Um, Pam did say thank you for the just as a side she says you know thanks for the comments about the COVID rules and everything that we're trying to do to keep the neighborhood safe because it's you know the people that want to come to the club they appreciate that that they know they can come and it'll be a safe place to go so that's exactly that's, right that's right yeah also we have just sorry just one other thing just on that same topic a lot of people don't realize that you may not have COVID or you may not know that you've been uh you know you've been exposed to it but there are also people in the community that are compromised their immune systems are compromised and they you know we me as one we need everybody to follow suit so that we can protect those that we don't even know that might be sitting next to us that right. could be very compromised yep thank you okay I don't have any more, more, no more comments for me, so. All right, well, then we will move to adjournment. I will make a motion that we adjourn at 1038. Second. Chip seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bye. Bye. All right, all right, you all have a good day. Thank you for being here.